In this look back at 100 years of the Medicine Hat Chamber of Commerce, it's plain to see how past successes and new beginnings inspire optimism, initiative, and the desire to move ahead. Such was the climate in 1900 when a group of businessmen met at the newly constructed Assiniboy Hotel. There, they documented their efforts to organize, naming E.J. Fewings, a real estate salesman, to lead their cause. The Medicine Hat Board of Trade was formally incorporated with Fewings as its first president. In those early days, budgets were minuscule and totally dependent on the fees of members in good standing with the board. This was the time of rapid relocation of settlers to Western Canada, and the Board of Trade lent its name to aggressive advertising campaigns to sell real estate in the Medicine Hat area. Agents promised a wide variety of crops due to the area's hot climate and long growing season. Indeed, bountiful harvests were common at the time. As a result, the first industries to be established in Medicine Hat were primarily based in agriculture. However, the Board of Trade felt that this was only the beginning of making the Hat a major industrial centre. Tens of thousands of brochures and pamphlets were distributed throughout the Western world in an effort to draw industry to the hat. Those that took advantage of the area's natural resources were most successful. Board of Trade President William Cousins stated, the natural advantages of Medicine Hat should be advertised and manufacturers induced to locate here. With unheard of incentives, many new industries were established in the Hat with varying degrees of success. By 1914, the city was well on its way to attaining the board's expectations. War efforts were greatly supported by the board and seen as an opportunity to diversify business and later expand as a base for military training and POW camps. As the city grew, transportation became crucial. The chamber initiated construction of the Finley Bridge and lobbied tirelessly to have roads ready for the revolution of the automobile. In retrospect, we'll see how these efforts seem to be signs of great things to come later in the century. However, the board was not without its disappointments. In 1914, construction began on a CNR railway to Hanna. Six years later, with 90% of the line completed, the project was abandoned. It was at this time that the Board of Trade, suffering through infighting and an unhealthy relationship with City Council, reorganized as the Chamber of Commerce. Again, the organization was optimistic about its contributions to the city. But hope was short-lived, as the area sunk deep into drought and depression. The Chamber did all it could to help see the farmers and workers through the hard times. And when relief could best be found in social occasions, 
the Chamber backed developments and initiatives to bring the community together. It was clear, though, that from Medicine Hat's humble beginnings, the outlandish promise of the early century would not be achieved overnight. Expansion hit its pinnacle in 1914 and was followed by many years of struggle and disappointment. So in 1947, I became a, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and I've been a, been a member ever since. The Chamber was quite small at that time, operated out of a very small office. Our fee schedules were very meager. It was small town as far as the Chamber was concerned. We hadn't sold ourselves as to what good the Chamber could do. We gave speeches to the graduating classes at the school did everything we could to try and promote why a person should be a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I likened Medicine Hat to a Pittsburgh, the brick plants, a manufacturing here. We had one of the biggest plants here in Redcliffe from the Dominion Glass. They had, uh, oh, I think well over 700 to 800 employees. Northwest Nitro coming in here. The Goodyear Tire people putting up the plant here, that we were really thrilled to get that here. And it was, it was through hard work of an awful lot of chamber members, not all, because the city council and the mayor and uh, aldermen and people like that, they, they deserve a ton of credit for this. But don't sell the chamber short, because a lot of people, like the Bob Lacy's, it's men like that that have had the history of Medicine Hat at their fingertips and have done an awful lot to promote Medicine Hat. When they said that Medicine Hat has all hell for a great basin, it meant something. They dressed up like Arabs and they went to Lethbridge to show how they, we have this desert down here. And they brought all this irrigation. The Milk River irrigation that comes right here, right to the hat's uh, doorstep. And it was most important because in this short grass country down here in this area, in the hills here, it takes a lot of grass to support one animal. And uh, we didn't seem to be getting through to government. And we, and we wanted the government to know that this chamber was most supportive of the leases that you seem to be fighting all the way, that people wanted to get their fingers into royalties on this gas. And it would be people down east that would be making these decisions. And therefore, I took it as kind of a personal pilgrimage to say I didn't like it. And I spoke out at the time. At least we got to know what the people here in Medicine had felt. We had uh, a lot to do with the support of the city in getting the runway upgraded so that we could get a, a decent air service in here. And uh, I'm not trying to suggest that the chamber did all this work, but I'm trying to say that we supported every move that uh, we could possibly do. We worked on this business of a new uh, Chamber of Commerce building. That's the one that we're in at the present time. And uh, uh, we had full support of the city. They uh, helped us finance. That's been really our pride and joy because, you know, it gives you some feeling of independence. And we, and we have in Medicine Hat here now the parks, swimming pool, and skating rink, and the arena, and the curling rink. I want to be involved with the chamber because it's the type of people that are going to promote this city to make it a much better place to live. A small town is now a fair city, has a real soul. And I found that soul in working in this type of thing. When 
I was on a council nearly, well, on eight years, and I think seven of those years, Harry Viner was the mayor. And, uh, but there was nobody that was more enthusiastic about promoting Medicine Hat, and he, he did all kinds of weird things, like wrestling alligators and cutting cane with Castro. And, and was he supportive of the chamber? I think he reasonably supported it. You were on I was on the city council, and Jim Miller was on the city council. And you were both And we were both ch chamber presidents. And uh, so, and we, I think we could take a bit of credit for actually holding him down a little bit. Farmer Wrencher Night, it was hugely successful. We invited all the farmers and ranchers from the district and uh, put on a really big dinner. There were virtually no irrigation west of Medicine Hat until you got to perhaps Bow Island. And now that's, of course, irrigated all the way. This, uh, this was a really big topic all the time. It was in the uh, centennial year, so we were, had quite a lot of opportunities to get involved in, in many programs. And, and one of our main programs that we had was uh, uh, Out of the Hat. Uh, this was a program that the chamber put on, and we had about uh, oh, 25 local musicians that uh, visited uh, the communities around Medicine Hat for every weekend and put on a, a stage show for them. And uh, oh, there's a, a group from the chat, which included Orv Cope and uh, Stan Weiler and Tom Gunter, and then they had the Qantas Band, Robert Stanfield. He came and he was our speaker. At that time, he was the uh, leader of the opposition. And for, he was here for two or three days. And for part of the program, he was invited out to one of the ranches south of town. And uh, the stories that the ranchers told to uh, Mr. Stanfield uh, uh, probably made his hair turn up a little bit. <laughs> probably some of them weren't, weren't, uh, weren't true. But uh, nevertheless, he had a lot of stories to take back to Ottawa when he went back. And then that was the same year that uh, the government, federal government, was to introduce uh, Medicare. And while the chamber was uh, in favor of the principle of Medicare, they uh, wanted it to be just for people that couldn't afford uh, medical insurance. And if you could afford medical insurance, you paid for it. And the ones that couldn't afford it, well, then they uh, uh, they got it for free, and this is a, a program. This is the telegram we sent back to Ottawa when I was president. The battle between the city council and the chamber, I mean, used to get very hectic at times. And I decided that during my tenure, I would try and get rid of that that feeling uh, between council and the chamber. We want the best things to happen to our community that we love so much. Uh, let's get rid of this, this, uh, these arguments that we're having. Let's get rid of the differences, and let's start cooperating with one another. And uh... as irrigation came into this area, and as the smaller towns uh, died away, agriculture became more and more an important part of the economy of Medicine Hat, and it was time that. Uh, it was recognized as a business contributing to Medicine Hat. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, and just prior to that, uh, during the 70s, uh, was a big change in agriculture. It was where uh, the, the, the farms and ranches started to get larger, where the quarter section farm could not make a living uh, unless it was on irrigation and with specified crops. With the um, uh, tourist Information Center, and the Chambers become involved in that, and they have been a real asset of turning uh, tour buses, etc., uh, down to, to see the uh, Great Wall of China. And uh, uh, Medalta is being improved uh, year to year, and certainly will be a big attraction. And, uh, you know, we have to uh, promote the fact that Medalta was the first export of manufactured goods from Western Canada. 
we, we really made some changes uh, in the Alberta Chamber uh, to make it uh, more independent from the Canadian Chamber. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. We uh, set up a medical appointment uh, uh, with him and, uh, and therefore went into his office and uh, sat down and talked him into heading this committee uh, to uh, twin number one highway. In 1979, uh, we were very interested in trying to get the Trans-Canada Highway twinned. At that time, it was just a two-lane road with lots of accidents. Uh, we invited the Minister of Highways to come down from Edmonton to discuss this problem with us. And he informed us very candidly that he had no intention of, tra of twinning the Trans-Canada Highway. So we went and saw Jim Horsman, who at that time was a member of the legislature. He suggested that the only way we would get any activity would be if we could get a lot of letters or speeches about the problem. So we started off in Medicine Hat. At that time, we had uh, Mr. Dave Oliphant as our business manager. Between the two of us, we attended all the service clubs, some of the churches in Medicine Hat and Redcliffe. We also then went to Brooks, Bassano, and to Calgary, where we attended their Chamber of Commerce meetings. Uh, we got everybody interested and everybody writing letters. And we were told later that they got more letters in Edmonton on this subject than on any subject they'd ever had. Within one year's time, the minister announced a 10-year program for twinning the Trans-Canada Highway. And that was a... Uh time when our membership was fairly small. We only had uh, about 325 members and our only source of uh, income was uh, membership dues and of course uh, this caused us some concern. We couldn't do many of the things we wanted to do. So that's when the trade shows started uh, about that time and trade shows have developed into a into a major fundraiser for the Chamber. Well, the trade shows uh, are certainly beneficial to the uh, public at large. They learn a great deal from trade shows. And uh, besides that, it, uh, it's great for the businesses themselves. We decided that we would put some emphasis on a degree-granting status for the college. And uh, quite a bit of work was done uh, towards that end, and ultimately that has now happened. Another goal of ours was to increase the membership, and I know in, when we started, I think it was in Gary's year, we were running about 200 members, and in, late in my term we broke 500 members, which was a big accomplishment at the time made us the fourth largest chamber in the province. Uh, I think there were a number of members who were uh, uh, at least initially opposed to the widening because of the impact it would have on their businesses. And it always puts the chamber in a difficult position uh, when some of its members have a, have a vested interest in the decision. And then I know we struggled over that decision for some time, but I, I believe ultimately decided that it was the best interest of the business in Medicine Hat that we support it. I think the fundamental message is the same, and that even back when I was in the chamber, it was make Medicine Hat the kind of place that people want to be in. It will attract business and industry, and, and you don't have to go out and seek it. You just have to make sure that, that you make this a great place to live, and, and uh, people will come. I believe we won in 1988 the Alberta Chamber of Commerce Chamber of the Year Award, which I believe was the first for the Medicine Hat Chamber. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. keeping it in the family, I think the year Ron was president, the Chamber won the Chamber of the Year Award again, again hmm. so 1990-91. We hosted the AGM in Medicine Hat for the first time in many years during my presidency. It brings Chamber of Commerce members from all across Canada to the city, make them aware of our city, our business affiliations, everything that our community does. I find the Chamber a very good voice for business in the community. They do a lot to lobby City Hall, provincial and federal governments with the best interests at heart of the business community. 
And as a business person, we need that voice. Medicine had, it had always been promoted by the chamber and the city because it's been able to have very low uh, taxes, very low utilities, and becomes probably the least expensive place to, to live and, and to perhaps locate an industry. So this has always been a big thing of the chambers to promote this where it can. I think what's changing now, though, is uh, uh, there's a lot of knowledge-based industries out there that don't, that's not a factor for them, and they're starting to focus, we're just starting to see a change in trying to attract those kind of industries here, and for a lot of them, focuses on quality of life, because they are located in uh, Silicon Valley, where uh, the quality of life is poor, uh, they can do the same kind of business from anywhere, so if you can attract them to a location like Medicine Hat, and, and give them good quality of life, then they may locate here if everything else is in place for them. Transit was a big issue during my presidency. We did we produced a, a report um, identifying numerous ways that uh, the city could reduce the amount they were spending on, a, you know, a Cadillac version of transit in the city of Medicine Hat when we really didn't need that kind of a version and, and it got some pretty uh, high profile negative flack because people were perceiving that the chamber was suggesting that we eliminate busing and access to busing, et cetera. But when the city was running at an accumulated deficit over uh, 12 years of, of many million dollars and it just really didn't make any sense. Well, I think the chamber really is the voice of business. I mean, that's uh, whenever I talk to anybody who's in business, if they're not involved with the chamber, I don't have any problem, you know, convincing them they should be a member because of the benefits uh, personally for me as a business person and just to see the kinds of activities over the years that the chamber's gotten involved with, it's, it's, it's uh, totally to promote business and improve the quality of life in Medicine Hat. And it's, you know, to not be a member of the chamber to me just is, is crazy. I mean, you're missing out on supporting something that's actually supporting you as a business person. Well, a lot of times the issues that you have are, are ongoing and you see many projects through the fruition that may have started before. Uh, certainly one of our major uh, accomplishments, I think, as a group was the uh, Winter Spirit Festival of Lights, which we, which we initiated and, and finalized that year. That saw the largest uh, theme park of lights open in, in, our, in Medicine Hat and I think has become a major tourist attraction. Um, we ended up um, having to put a bridge into uh, Ken Cooley and we entered a partnership with the city in order to do that. It was a very major undertaking but it also showed the uh, foresight of the, of the board to take a chance and uh, to proceed with that and, and that project has been very successful but it wasn't because we instituted it, we saw it through and it's still an ongoing project for the chamber. The delivery of the tourism project uh, pr process through in partnership with City Hall and really it's almost a way of going back to the way things were many many years ago when chambers did deliver that program and I think it was a it, the the partnership between the city and, and the chamber has been a very positive one anticipating our hundredth anniversary which we're celebrating this year we initiated a membership drive uh, which we coined a uh, thousand members for the year 2000 the one by two program which is undergoing an ongoing program as we as we speak well I would say that over the years the relationship between the city and the Chamber of Commerce have been very positive. We have had moments when individual policies have been challenged by the Chamber and that is an appropriate role for them to take. We in the city have to understand that we are responsible to the business community and the general public and sometimes what seems to the Chamber of Commerce as uh, regulation and red tape is someone else's protection. I've said that many times and sometimes the, the chamber has an obligation to make representation for its people and for its members and not always does it reflect what the common good is. So in that regard we've had our uh, moments in history where there have been disputes but we have never ever felt that the, uh, the chamber's voice should be ignored. It will be always taken into the, the pool. 
Since its inception in 1900 as the Board of Trade, the Chamber of Commerce has had a significant impact on the citizens of Medicine Hat. Medicine Hat, as we know and appreciate it today, would not look as it does now if it was not for the Board of Trade formed back in 1900 and then was actively out marketing and supporting and trying to bring industry and business to Medicine Hat. All the way into the 40s and 50s through two world wars and through a depression, the Medicine Hat Chamber of Commerce was relevant for its members and continued to provide service not only to the members of the business community but to the community as a whole. And I'm very optimistic will be very relevant for the next 100 years, perhaps into the next millennium. It's funny how the more things change, the more things stay the same. Even today, we are still pursuing and going after many of the things that the original Board of Trade back in 1900 was going after. We are still continually out there trying to attract business and industry to Medicine Hat. We have an exciting new initiative called Jobs Plus, in which we will be doing just that. We are undertaking through the Business Partners Education a student employment database, which will help both industry and students be able to match themselves and really act as a dating service between those who wish to hire and those who need to be hired. As well, we are still trying to get highways twinned and we're still dealing with utility rates for our members. It's very humbling for myself to see my name on that board with 99 other presidents and to think that my name someday will be used synonymously with theirs is very humbling and quite honoring. As I wander through the exhibit and take in the many things that the original Board of Trade, which was later changed to the Chamber of Commerce, did all the way back from 1900, it's quite interesting and a little bit emotional to think that over a hundred years this organization has been so relevant and done such a terrific job for its members and that I now have the pleasure of leading this organization into the new millennium and being its 100th president.